Today I'm going to show you how to use a magnetic door switch with your Arduino. This shouldn't take long. These magnetic door switches are great. They are very affordable and can be used to detect if something is open or closed. Doors, windows, your next project enclosure, you name it. So how do you connect it to your Arduino and why should you care about debouncing? If we measure the resistance between these two wires, if the door is closed and this magnet is placed next to the sensor, the contact is also closed. If the door is open, the contact is open. So the contact basically looks like this. And if there is a magnet next to it, then it's closed. How can we interface this signal into our Arduino? The easiest way is to connect one side to ground and the other side to any digital input pin. So for example, pin three. Let's set the pin three to input, start a serial connection, and then I will just output the state of pin three. Let's add a little delay of 100 milliseconds and see what happens. We get a lot of zeros. So let's connect the sensor. One side to ground and the other side to our pin three. Yeah, let's add a new line to this print statement. Then we get a new line every time we get new data. It's zero and when we put the magnet next to it, it stays zero. The problem is this pin right here is now connected to ground or it's floating. We have these two states. And if it's floating, then it's basically uncertain, but most of the time it's just the last state or sometimes you can also change its state if you touch the wire, as you can see here, because it floats around. We need to put this into a defined state and this can be done with a pull-up resistor. So we add a resistor, usually something like 10 kilo ohm and connect it to VCC, which is five volts. If this resistor is too small, then it consumes too much current. It's not really necessary. And if it's too high, the pin is almost floating. So then it gets unstable again. 10K is a nice value. We connect this to our sensor and then the other side to five volts. Now suddenly our signal jumps to one because the contact isn't closed, so it's not tied to ground. Right now it's pulled up to VCC. And if we put this magnet very close, it changes its state to zero. Now that's great, but we don't even need this resistor here because Arduino has built-in pull-up resistors. Let me show you. If I define pin three as input pull-up, and we connect this internal pull-up resistor and everything still works exactly as it did before. And we can now safely remove this 10K resistor and it now uses this internal resistor to pull up the signal if the contact isn't closed. Usually we're not interested in this state all of the time. We're interested in state changes. How can we detect state changes? We could do something like this. Let's start with a Boolean variable called sensor state. And we start with false. And then we jump into a while true loop. And inside there, we just check if digital read pin three is not equal to sensor state. Then it gets interesting. If digital read free, if it's high, then and we jump in here and else if low. Now, if it's high, we can set sensor state to true. And if it's low, sensor state equals false. And now we can also trigger events. The door has been opened or door has been closed. Let's try. D yeah, digital read, ah, print LN. The door has been opened. The door has been closed. 
opened, closed, opened, closed. Right now I see no need for debouncing. Maybe the serial print is already enough debouncing because it's basically a delay. Let's put it to 115,200 and see if we still need no debouncing. Nope, it's fine. <laughs> so I'm not going to fake it. Usually when you close a contact, you get this bouncing. It goes on, off, on, off, on. And if you open it, usually you don't get bouncing. But if you open high currents, then you get an arc. So then you also get some weird effects, but we won't get arcs here. Are you also using these door sensors? Did you have to debug them? Uh, are you debouncing it? Why don't I have to debounce them? If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe to this channel if you're ready to dive deep into the world of Arduino. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.